Romania is not often a commonly discussed country when it relates to World War II. Despite spending time aligned to both the Axis and Allies, the southeastern European nation was not necessarily a belligerent at the forefront of the conflict. Nonetheless, Romania impacted World War II in multiple significant ways. One of particular importance, though, actually had nothing to do with combat. Instead, it was something the Allies knew the importance of all too well. Oil. Europe, 1943. One Romanian city in particular, by the name of Ploiesti, became known as Hitler's gas station due to its remarkable and reliable oil production for the Axis power. Romania as a whole had been known as a top oil producer prior to the outbreak of the war, and it had become a global oil producer by the early 20th century thanks to the country's own innovation and foreign investment. By the commencement of the First World War, Germany had already become fairly reliant on Romanian oil. When World War II kicked off and the Germans eventually turned their sights against Russia, part of the motivation for such a decision was to ensure that Germany could maintain control of Romania's oil as opposed to the Allies. Thus, while the Germans sent troops to guard the oil fields, particularly that of Plauiesti, which alone produced over 50% of Germany's oil, the Allies planned to cut Hitler off from his favorite gas station. At the time, though, the Americans, who may have been the most motivated to complete the task of ending Romania's oil production, were already in Libya as part of the Allied Western Desert Campaign against Italy and Germany. Subsequently, despite being preoccupied as they were, the Americans began to formulate another campaign, which would soon be codenamed Operation Tidal Wave. Colonel Jacob Edward Smart was the mastermind behind the operation. His plans were based on an earlier attempt that the U.S. had made to take out Romanian oil in June of 1942 during the Halverson Project, or Halpro Raid, at the same Plauiesht oil fields. In this mission, 13 B-24 Liberator heavy bombers coming from RAF Fayyid in Egypt were used to launch six bombs across the city two in another Romanian city of Constanza, six more into Taishan, eight throughout the nearby Black Sea, and finished off with a few more in Chofflichen. Despite the number of explosives successfully dropped, damage to Romania's oil production was minimal, although three casualties were counted in total. When this raid occurred, the Americans had scarcely faced any pushback from the German Luftwaffe or Romanian defense. As a result, Colonel Smart felt as though the chances of facing a strong response from the Axis would once again be slim, and therefore that sending even more planes with more bombs would only provide further success. His plan, then, was for the American 9th Air Force, with the assistance of the 8th Air Force, to launch the raid in daylight and at a low enough altitude to at least avoid German radar detection. This low-altitude bombing was not a common concept, and repeated drills were carried out in the Libyan desert to ensure that such a task could be effectively completed. 1,751 airmen and 178 bombers, the same type as in the prior raids, were to be employed for Operation Tidal Wave, and the actual bombing of the targets was meant to be done simultaneously. To get there, the bombers would take off from their airfields in Libya, flying over the Mediterranean and the Adriatic Sea before passing by Corfu Island, navigating above the Pindus Mountains, then continue on into southern Yugoslavia before entering the southwest of Romania and heading east to their destination. Then, if all went well, and under the assumption that the Germans would have a mild reaction this time, as they did before, all targets would be bombarded at the same time, and Romania's oil production capabilities would be devastated. That is, of course, only if things went according to plan. But unbeknownst to the Americans, the Germans were determined to protect the Axis oil. 
After the earlier 13 bomber attack on Plowyesht, the Axis had quickly recognized their failures to defend the oil fields from such a raid. Hoping to be better prepared for any future attempts, both Germany and Romania responded by surrounding the city with heavy anti aircraft defenses that would end up becoming one of the most impressive to be enacted throughout Europe in the war. Together, the German and Romanian artillery totaled 52 heavy, 9 medium, and 17 light anti-aircraft batteries, in addition to a few hundred 10.5-centimeter Flak 38 and 88-millimeter anti-aircraft guns. To top it all off, a plethora of smaller-caliber guns were concealed in hollow buildings, haystacks, railroad cars, and other unexpected hiding spots. With these immediate defenses and nearby aircraft and troops at the ready, the Romanian city became one of the most protected Axis holdings and the most protected outside of the Third Reich itself. All of this was done and made ready without an inkling of knowledge from the Allies. So, still under the assumption that the raid would be fairly easy to execute, the Americans took off in the early hours of August 1st, 1943. Five heavy bombardment groups took part in the battle, the 98th and 376th that had already been based in Benghazi, Libya, and the 44th, 93rd, and 389th that were sent from England. However, despite the heavy manpower and vast preparation, the mission quickly got off to an ominous start. As the bombers, all weighed down by additional fuel and heavy bombs, lifted off from their Libyan bases, the dust kicked up from the motion caused such severe visibility conditions that one of the 178 aircraft went down already. Still, the remaining 177 carried on. Upon reaching the Adriatic Sea, another incident occurred. Aircraft 28 went down without warning after flying erratically on its way straight into the open water. When Aircraft 23 left the remaining 176 to look for survivors of 28, there were no survivors to be found, and the weight of the extra fuel and bombs prevented 23 from regaining altitude and finishing the mission. Now, only 175 remained. Since the entire mission was supposed to be executed in complete radio silence to avoid German detection, these events triggered a wave of confusion which led to 10 additional bombers abandoning the fleet and returning to friendly airspace. Now, 165 remain. During the ensuing flight over the Pindus Mountains, the 376th and 93rd bomb groups accidentally separated from the rest of the fleet and were unable to re-establish coordination with each other due to the radio silence. The Germans, ironically, already knew that the Americans were there, and the decision not to communicate with the slower portion of the fleet proved to be in vain. And to make matters worse, the separation would only widen. The 93rd and 376th groups, who had crossed the mountains at a much high speed due to the engine settings that were utilized by the more experienced pilots from Benghazi, continued to increase the gap between themselves and the 98th, 44th, and 389th groups. The latter three groups were flying at a much lower power setting and, possibly due to the experience levels of their pilots, were unable or unwilling to catch up to their quicker counterparts. It's possible, as well, that the slower three groups were intentionally flying at a lower setting in order to preserve their worn-down engines and ensure that they would be able to increase power as needed once the bombing actually began. Whatever the reason, by the time they crossed Romania's border, a 20-minute gap had been created, as opposed to the one-minute gap that was supposed to exist between all five groups. And this would be the final easy part of the journey. Once all five groups correctly hit the first checkpoint, as they flew on, two unlucky men made a devastating error yet again. On their way to the Flores checkpoint, while in Targoviste, Colonel Keith K. Compton and General Ent turned in the wrong direction and instead found themselves approaching Bucharest, followed by the 93rd bomb groups. Apparently fed up with the ongoing confusion, multiple crews began to communicate via radio to warn the misdirected aircraft of their mistake. 
a 376th bomb group pilot by the name of John Pam was still agitated by the earlier group error and headed east to attack the objective on his own. His aircraft was hit by both anti-aircraft fire and a German BF-109 fighter. As a result, John Pam never reached the target, landing in a cornfield and becoming the first aircraft lost in combat. Realizing that the entire mission had devolved into an unorganized scramble, the commander of the 93rd Bomb Group, Lieutenant Colonel Addison E. Baker, had stopped following the 376th towards Bucharest and returned to his group to the actual target in search of the refineries they were supposed to bomb. But instead, their reversal took them directly to the center of the fire. During the rain of shells, the aircraft, flown by Lieutenant Colonel Baker and Major John L. Gerstad, took a heavy hit. However, they were still able to drop their bombs to maintain the course of their formation across the target at the Columbia Aquila refinery. The aircraft was no longer controllable, but they continued to climb as much as they could in order to allow their crew to abandon the aircraft, which quickly crashed afterward. Neither Baker nor Gestad survived, though both of them received the Medal of Honor posthumously for their courageous actions. Other planes from the 93rd Bombing Group successfully dropped their bombs on the Astro Romana and Ria Orion and Columbia Aquila refineries. Now, with the Germans fully alerted and the Americans arriving in a chaotic fashion, the raid began nonetheless. The events that followed would earn the day the depressing nickname of Black Sunday as the Americans quickly took heavy casualties. The low altitude of the mission greatly affected visibility after the first bombs were dropped, and surviving airmen spoke of how debris and flames engulfed their crafts, in addition to heavy fire from Plauyesh defenses. The 93rd Group lost 11 aircraft over their targets, one of which crashed into a woman's prison, killing roughly 100 civilians and injuring another 200. More to the south, as the 26 B-24s of the 376th Bomb Group approached Bucharest, Colonel Compton finally realized his error and took a U-turn away from Bucharest. Approaching Plauyest from the south, he viewed that his assigned target, the Romana Americana refinery, was well defended, and General Entz gave the order to abandon the effort to hit the brief target and instead bomb any targets of opportunity along the way. Just a few aircraft were actually able to drop bombs on the initially planned targets, although three of them managed to come back and hit a target of the 93rd Group called the Concordia Vega. Meanwhile, the 376th lost two aircraft as the mission carried on. After about 20 minutes, the other three groups arrived on the scene, while the 44th, commanded by Colonel Leon William Johnson, and the 98th, commanded by Colonel John Riley Kane, flew along the railway. They passed a steam train, which they hadn't recognized to be an anti-aircraft train. When they got close enough, the sides of six wagons fell, and the roofs opened, revealing an 88mm cannon and a few 20mm cannons. They began firing into the two groups of bombers, damaging a few aircrafts. During this ambush, the air gunners quickly responded by firing back and eventually shot out the engine of the train and were also able to take out multiple defense crews. Both commanders of the two groups did not deviate from their targets, despite taking heavy damage in the process. The target of the 98th Bombardment Group, Astro Romana Refinery, was already burning from the previous raid made by the 93rd Bombardment Group. Huge explosions and smoke filled the sky, but Colonel Kane attacked anyway through extremely low visibility, while the Romanian and German anti-aircraft batteries never stopped firing against the American pilots. 21 out of the 40 aircraft were lost. Meanwhile, on the west, the 44th Group split into two. Colonel Leon William Johnson attacked Columbia Aquila Refinery with 17 B-24s, and Colonel James Theo Posey led a group of 19 B-24s five miles to the south to bomb the other refinery, which was producing high-octane gasoline for the aircraft. The entire group lost nine bombers. Nonetheless, both Colonel John R. Kane and Colonel W. Johnson received the Medal of Honor. 
13 kilometers northwest of Plauyest, the 389th Bombardment Group, led by Colonel Jack Weston Wood, attacked Stewa Romana Refinery with 29 B-24 Liberators. Lieutenant Lloyd Hughes' bomber was particularly damaged by the anti-aircraft fire approaching the target. But, in spite of taking heavy hits, he continued dropping his bombs on the target and maintaining the course as to avoid holding up the rest of the group. His B-24 eventually caught fire from the flames, rising higher and higher underneath the bombers, prompting him to try and land in a riverbed. But the tip of one of his wings caught the ground. The aircraft violently crashed, killing Hughes and all but two of his crew. However, Lieutenant Hughes was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. In total, the 389th Group lost four planes in the chaos, but their mission was successful, taking the refinery out of service for the rest of the war. Still, the results of the raid were short of expectations. Of the nine refineries targeted, only six were struck, with the overall production of those six reduced by a mere 46%. But the effects were short-lived, and the devastation done to the U.S. airmen was no less calamitous. Most of the lost production was restored fairly quickly, within months or even weeks. But for Stewa Romana Refinery, production was cut off for the rest of the war. And while the targets that had been struck as planned validated the effectiveness of the low-level tactics, unfortunately for the Americans, the navigation errors limited the impact on the additional targets and caused three to be missed entirely. Only 88 bombers returned to Libya that night, and 55 of them had severe battle damage. An additional total of 23 aircraft landed at Allied bases in Cyprus, Malta, and Sicily. And as for the men behind the crafts, over 500 Americans were either dead, missing, or captured. Axis losses consisted of three Romanian fighter planes and one airman, as well as five German fighters and three air crews. Adding to these numbers, three German soldiers and 12 Romanians were killed at anti-aircraft gun sites. Despite the successes relating to the damage done to oil production at Plauyest, the mission had gone much differently than planned, and a huge part of this was due to human error. Nonetheless, many Americans were deemed heroes that day, and five were given the Medal of Honor, though only two survived to truly receive it. Although this would become the record-setter for most medals of honor awarded to airmen in a single mission, it was still considered to be an overall disaster and was not reattempted.